Yeah, I think um, Coach Johnson says it best. I think the jump from high school to college baseball is the biggest jump in talent gap that you'll make as a baseball player. Um, so it took a lot of time to adjust to get used to the speed of the game. Um, it is true what they say that the game speeds up at the next level. Um, for me, I just try to take it one day at a time. Um, you know, I learned how to handle my emotions better with the ups and downs throughout the year last year um, and just trying to take that into this year. The biggest thing we've, we've spoken with Coach Johnson, uh, just kind of about you and the improvements that you needed to make, were just kind of the mental side of things, just growing mentally in terms of just you know, have a couple bad at bats, don't let that turn into you know, a whole series kind of deal. Just how, what kind of strides do you think you've made in that area, and just kind of how ready are you to kind of you know go into this season knowing that you've made those strides? Yeah, I'm extremely excited to get into this year. Um, you know, I think I've made a, a great strides as far as that is concerned. Um, that's something that I've had sit down meetings with Coach Johnson in his office talking about my mental game and just how can I keep improving it. Um, it's never going to be a finished product. I'm still, you know, probably going to get upset at times or get frustrated, but uh, just kind of stay the course and take things one pitch at a time. You know you're going to inevitably get compared to Trey, right, taking over that position. How important is it for you to play your game the way that you play it and not necessarily try to live up to some expectations? Yeah, I think uh, Trey Morgan played an amazing first base. Um, and for me, being able to kind of watch him play for a year and develop under him, he was a great uh, mentor and leader on the team last year, and he helped me out tremendously. Um, and that's something that, you know, it, when he's in the hitting building today, uh, you know, working out, getting ready for pro ball, that, you know, we still cut it up and laugh sometimes. So the fact that he was able to kind of like take me under his wing and, and show me the ropes and now hand them to me for this year, um, you know, I'm just super excited to do what I can over at first base and, and make the routine plays. As far as what's more important to you, the, the defense or the receiving? Um, I think they both have their importance. Um, obviously, all I want to do is just, you know, make my infielders look good, um, drop third strikes, you know, throwing down to first base, just anything I can do, turning double plays, picking balls for my infielders, just helping them look as good as they possibly can. And how much did being in the lineup every day last year help you as opposed to when you were DHing only? Yeah, um, you know, DHing was different. You know, I started off the year last year as DH, and um, <laughs> you kind of sitting in the dugout just watching the game for most of it. Um, so it took took me a minute to get used to that because I was used to playing in the field all the time. But um, I was just super happy to have my name in the lineup last year. Um, and so I didn't take that for granted, and I won't do that again this year. Um, and so I'm just really excited to kind of go and attack this season. Uh, what are some, I guess, specific offensive improvements that you want to make at the plate uh, for this year? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is going to be strike zone discipline. Um, you know, hitting, swinging at pitches that I know I can hit well um, and kind of laying off everything else, um, especially early on in the count, um, just getting my pitch and doing damage with it. Where do you feel like there's the most room for improvement in your game? It's a great question. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of things I'm still trying to work on. I'm, I'm still very young, in my opinion. So um, just any time I can work on my maturity, uh, whether that's at the plate or defensively um, as a leader. You know, I am a, technically a veteran player on this team now this year. Um, and so stepping up into a leadership role and kind of taking any freshman I can under my wing and helping them out. Um, you know, but for me, it's just the mental side of the game. It's a really tough game. It's a game of failure. Um, and I just want to be the best that I can day in and day out and be very consistent with that. A hundred percent. I don't think there is a team meeting um, or, or a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the coaches that is not involved with attacking versus defending. Um, and I think we've kind of accepted that mindset and we're going to do a great job of embracing that. Um, and we are super excited. You know, I think we're what, 21 days away now. So we have 21 more days of preparation and then it's, it's attack mode from there and on. Asked, said that Gage was pretty tough. Uh, who, who has really stood out to you on the mound so far? 
you know, yesterday was our first inner squad, um, and I faced, you know, three really good pitchers in Thatcher, Gidry, and um, DJ Primo. And I think, you know, last year it's easy to watch the tape on those guys and say, you know, they're going to be really successful at this level. But even with Coach Yeski coming in and them taking the next steps towards becoming elite um, pitchers in this SEC. Um, and so for me, those three guys just yesterday really tough at bats. And, you know, they say iron sharpens iron. So we're just going to keep out there and competing with each other. And I think um, that's great for our offense because we're facing the best pitching staff in the country day in and day out. And then it's great for our pitchers because they have to face a great offense every day. Speaking of DJ, what made him so tough uh, during your at bat against him? Um, well, for starters, he throws really hard. Um, I think his fastball has been up to 97 already in the fall. So, you know, I'm sure with adrenaline rushing, he'll be up, you know, upper 90s. And then he's got a phenomenal slider, um, and he locates really well. Um, and Coach Yeski does a great job of calling pitches, and he does a great job of executing those pitches. And when you have a pitcher that can not only command the strike zone well, but has great stuff like he does, it makes for a really tough at bat. Uh, you mentioned strike zone dip discipline is something you want to improve on. I mean, how do you go about improving on something like that? Yeah, um, I think it starts with visualization um, before the game, you know, putting the pitcher that you're facing on the mound and kind of visualizing what his pitches look like and how you're going to, you know, get a base approach off of him. And then from there, it's just about execution. Um, you know, I've worked on the machine in the cages on sliders and fastballs and hitting both at the same time, taking the ones out of the zone, swinging out the ones in the zone, um, and just repetition as much as possible with that. Uh, with Paul uh, Skeens and Ty Floyd now moving on, how do you feel about that? You're kind of moving to the, if not the front of the line, close to it. And, um, and how did he pitch for you guys, like especially late in the year last year? Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Thatcher Hurd will be a top five arm in the country this year. Um, tremendous human being, one of the hardest workers on this team, comes in every day with the same mindset of wanting to get better, um, and he goes out there on the mound and shows that. Um, and I think he's going to do a great job stepping up in that role for us this year.